Five. Unintentional second degree murder while committing a felony. Find the defendant guilty. Guilty on all charges. Now at five, we're following breaking news as ex police officer Derek Chauvin learns his fate. Guilty! Well, the public needs to take back control of this and say, no, this is what we're going to do. The reaction from here in Utah and around the country. Police say they're ready. Activists say they're ready for any sort of possible protest that could happen this week. But what about business owners? We're checking in with them about their safety plans. It was a fairly calm day here across the state with mostly clear sky, but our wind is going to return. We'll also have some fire concerns over the next couple of days. I'll let you know where in the forecast. This virus really is opportunistic. And coronavirus in Utah. Some doctors expect an increase in cases and say that's not because of loosening mask rules. Of course, our top story, the Derek Chauvin murder trial already wrapped up within 24 hours of jurors receiving the case. The former police officer who killed George Floyd has been found guilty on all counts. It's a move that's nearly a year in the making. Fox's Lauren Blanchard has the latest developments from Minneapolis. The jury in the trial for former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin has reached their verdict. Members of the jury, I understand you have a verdict. Former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin found guilty on all three counts, second degree and third degree murder and second degree manslaughter in the death of George Floyd. Your Honor, the state would move to have the court uh, revoke the defendant's bail and remand him into custody. Bail is revoked, bond is discharged, and the defendant is remanded to the custody of the Hennepin County Sheriff. The jury returning with a verdict Tuesday afternoon after roughly a day of deliberations. The verdict comes nearly one year after this video of Chauvin kneeling on Floyd's neck for nearly nine and a half minutes went viral as Floyd begged for his life. I can breathe. The video setting off international protests over racial injustice and police brutality. Over the last three weeks, jurors listened to more than 40 witnesses. Crucial testimony for the prosecution coming from Dr. Martin Tobin, who testified that Floyd died from a lack of oxygen due to being pinned down by Chauvin. Some defense witnesses maintain Chauvin used reasonable force and that factors like Floyd's heart and illegal drug use contributed to his death. Minneapolis has been preparing for this verdict for months. Thousands of National Guard troops and law enforcement officers are in town to deal with any unrest. In Minneapolis, Lawrence. Blanchard, Fox News. Derek Chauvin found guilty and taken straight to jail to await sentencing. That will happen in eight weeks. Now Fox 13 is going in depth on what the jury's decision means. We're joined now by former Unified Police Deputy Chief Chris Bertram to help explain some things. And uh, uh, first of all, thank you for being with us. I really want to start by just giving you the opportunity to reflect on what this means after this year to you as uh, someone who's lived a life in law enforcement. Right, Matt. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting because I think this conversation has been going on for, for the last nine months uh, to, to what we have today. I think there has been um, some good uh, critical discussions with everybody in our community, not only law enforcement, but, you know, marginalized communities that, that feel that they're not getting the best uh, police support. Uh, and I, I think that this is just the continuation of that conversation, what happened today. I think that there are strides being made. We saw that during our legislative session with some of the laws being passed, but I, I think that there's more to be done in the future. Chris, touching on your point there, based upon what we've seen happen in the state of Utah and across the country over the past year and today's verdict, how will police officers now in Utah be trained to uphold the duty of the position and enforce the law with force without infringing on violence and assault to individuals? You know, I, I think it speaks to, you know, a lot of times we've heard about training and policy, but I, it also speaks to the practice and culture of these law enforcement agencies. We enjoy a very good relationship in law enforcement and our communities together, but it's not perfect and there's improvements that can be done. I think that, you know, involving, you know, law enforcement, those community, you know, the, the, the communities that feel that maybe they're not being served well, uh, add to that that the training equals the practice of what's going on in the field. I think too many times we, we say that we've trained officers and, and pass appropriate policies, but then the practice in the field doesn't actually reflect that. And I think that law enforcement leadership needs to continue to, 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 to act in a way that if our policies and our training aren't being met in the field, 
that there is a check and a balance that comes back around that we correct those. All right, Chris Bertram, with uh, the retired from the uh, Unified Police Department as a deputy chief, we really appreciate you bringing your insight to us. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Well, Salt Lake County District Attorney Sim Gill also reacting to news of the guilty verdict. Gill, the county's chief prosecutor, says the case is historic for many reasons, including the fact that it went to trial. While he understands this may feel like justice to some, he says the jury's decision is still only a finding of guilt in one case. The systemic challenge, uh, the, uh, the uh, institutional challenge, uh, the political challenge to change our laws and our society still exist there. So uh, this is a really a, a, a finding of guilt. Justice is the work that we're all we're working for and inspire to achieve still. And Gil added that in his personal experience, he's had to tell families of homicide victims that all he and his team can do is bring them an imperfect measure of justice. Well, and despite guilty verdicts on all charges, protesters are still planning to gather tonight in Salt Lake City. And it may be that rather than protests, they become something of a demonstration. Or a rally. We're still going to be waiting to see what that is. Fox 13's Sydney Glenn has spoken with business owners in downtown Salt Lake City about how they are preparing for possible unrest. Sydney joining us live. Hey, Sydney. Hey there, Max and Kelly. As of right now, things are really quiet, but you can see the barricades are up along with caution tape here at the Salt Lake City Police Department. Business owners nearby say they are hoping everything stays quiet and peaceful. We have to, we will board up our windows and uh, close for that uh, duration. As Bridget Gordon mentally prepares herself for the potential for more unrest, she goes back in time to last May. It was a lot of adrenaline, and I just couldn't believe that this was happening in Salt Lake City. This time, she says she's prepared, but hopeful things will never get to that level again. It broke my heart. It made me sad to see, see this happen to our great town. The executive chef at Stone Ground Kitchen talks about his anxiety and stress as he preps for dinner tonight. And we've experienced a lot of that last year, especially as a black man driving in um, downtown every day. He's having a lot of conversations with his family. Uh, they were mostly concerned about my safety, you know, asking, do you have to go to work? You know, do you have to go downtown? This year, he's watching to see what happens, but says he supports the movement and sees the importance of protesting peacefully. Our motto is kind of sit and wait to see what happens. Now everyone stays vigilant and ready. The public has the right to do this, and uh, we just ask, don't tear up your town in order to do this. Don't tear up your city. You know, be proud, protest peacefully. We've seen just a couple of protesters start to kind of trickle in those demonstrators. Now we are told that really these rallies or, or demonstrations are going to start around 6 o'clock tonight. Of course, we're going to have live coverage for you all night long right here and online. Live in Salt Lake City, Sydney Glenn, Fox 13 News, Utah. Sydney, thank you. Well, Utah Representative Burgess Owens sent a tweet this afternoon saying, today justice was served in the senseless killing of George Floyd. I'm praying for peace and healing in Minnesota and across the nation as we the people unite to build bridges for positive change. The Utah Jazz Organization also tweeting in reaction saying our hearts are with the George Floyd family today. His murder among too many examples of senseless killings, systemic racism and injustice has only heightened the urgency to peacefully and empathetically work towards creating sustainable and meaningful change. The work ahead of us remains clear. Our resolve is strong and our actions must be even stronger. The sentencing of Derek Chauvin will take place in eight weeks. You can catch all the updates on our sister network, Court TV, over the air, channel 13.3, also streaming on Roku, Fire, Apple TV, and Android devices. Still ahead on Fox 13 News Live at 5, medical cannabis can be expensive for those who need it, but there is work being done to make it more affordable for patients. We'll show you. And the cost of everything from detergent and razors to toilet paper and diapers will go up later this year. We'll explain how this could impact your family. And coming up tonight, our wind picks up here across the state. Tomorrow, more chances for rain and snow, plus fire warnings. Your forecast is coming up. Well, that's not very nice. But thanks to Remote Smart Parking Assist, it's no problem for the new Hyundai Sonata. It can pull itself in and out of tight parking spots without you being in the car. 
The Hyundai Sonata, a 2020 IIHS top safety pick. Now, get 0% APR on the Sonata or Elantra, or up to 2500 in total savings on the Sonata. Only at your Utah Hyundai dealer. I'm telling you, RC Willie's anniversary sale is an occasion you'll always remember, thanks to our incredible deals. Enjoy anniversary savings store-wide. Now that we're spending more time at home, comfort really counts. Save now on top-brand mattresses. With purchase of any size Sealy Posturepedic Hybrid mattress, get $200 toward bed accessories. Purchase any size Tempur-Pedic mattress and get $300 toward bed accessories. Don't miss our anniversary sale. We're taking extra precautions so you can shop safely at RC Willie. How we doing? Fabulous. I wonder how the firm's doing without its fearless leader. You sure you want to leave that all behind? Yeah. Stay restless with the icon that does the same. The RX, crafted by Lexus. Lease the 2021 RX 350 for $439 a month for 36 months. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. Welcome back, everyone. The Utah Department of Health says nearly 800,000 people, or more than 33% of people over the age of 16, are now fully vaccinated in the state. And they say with 1.9 doses administered, 1.9 million, more than 37% of the state's population has had at least one dose. University of Utah doctors predict a rise in COVID-19 cases in Utah, though, after a steady decline since January. Fox 13's Haley Higgins looks into what's behind the potential acceleration as nearly 2 million vaccines have been administered. Let's do it, Bobby. At the Salt Palace, Bobby Hansen and Shalise Olney come for their final vaccination. Second dose, doctor. The friends are among the 51% of Utahns over the age of 16 who have received at least one dose. I want to hug people again. I miss my family and friends, and I'm just ready to be, you know, back to this normal world. Yet University of Utah physicians believe COVID cases will increase statewide in the coming weeks. This virus really is opportunistic. Already Weber, Morgan, Davis, and Wasatch counties are seeing small outbreaks. It's just a concern when we see this in a few counties, um, that means there's a bit of an outbreak in that population relative to the rest of the state. University of Utah's chief medical operations officer says 40% of positive tests trace back to the highly contagious UK variant. And so viruses can spread a lot quicker than our ability to vaccinate people. Uh, so I do expect the, the cases to go up because the virus is spreading and mutating. How does Utah rank nationally? About the middle of the pack compared to other states, 18th when it comes to new cases and test positivity, and 15th in new COVID-19 deaths, according to the latest data from the CDC. Well, what can be done? Doctors echo what they've been saying for a while now. Wear a mask, socially distance, and get that vaccine. I feel more confident, obviously, in myself, but also that I know I'm not impacting right. others around me or those I care about. In Salt Lake City, Haley Higgins. Professional. I love it. Fox 13 News, Utah. Well, the University of Utah says they've seen a drop in demand for the vaccine in recent weeks. Now, today we've seen the death of six more women, two more men attributed to COVID-19, four of which occurred before March 20th. Utah's seen more than 2,174 deaths from the pandemic. Utah also saw another 315 new cases of the virus. 138 people are currently hospitalized for COVID-19. Let's go back to breaking news right now on the Derek Chauvin case. President Joe Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris are speaking about it now. Let's listen in found former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin guilty on all counts in the murder of George Floyd last May. It was a murder in the full light of day and it ripped the blinders off for the whole world to see the systemic racism the vice president just referred to. The systemic racism is a stain on our nation's soul. <clears throat> the knee on the neck of justice for black Americans. Profound fear and trauma. The pain, the exhaustion that black and brown Americans experience every single day. The murder of George Floyd launched a summer of protest. 
we hadn't seen since the civil rights era in the 60s. Protests that unified people of every race and generation in peace and with purpose to say enough, enough, enough of this senseless killings. Today, today's verdict is a step forward. I just spoke with the governor of Minnesota who thanked me for the close work with his team. And I also spoke with George Floyd's family again. A remarkable family of extraordinary courage. Nothing can ever bring their brother, their father back. But this can be a giant step forward in the march toward justice in America. Let's also be clear that such a verdict is also much too rare. For so many people, it seems like it took a unique and extraordinary convergence of factors. A brave young woman with a smartphone camera, a crowd that was traumatized, traumatized witnesses, a murder that lasts almost 10 minutes in broad daylight for ultimately the whole world to see. Officers standing up and testifying against a fellow officer instead of just closing ranks, which should be commended. A jury who heard the evidence carried out their civic duty in the midst of an extraordinary moment under extraordinary pressure. For so many, it feels like it took all of that for the judicial system to deliver a just, just basic accountability. We saw how traumatic and exhausting just watching the trial was for so many people. Think about it, those of you who are listening. Think about how traumatic it was for you. You weren't there. You didn't know any of the people. But it was difficult, especially for the witnesses who had to relive that day. It's a trauma. On top of the fear so many people of color live with every day when they go to sleep at night and pray for the safety of themselves and their loved ones. Again, as we saw in this trial from the fellow police officers who testified, most men and women who wear the badge serve their communities honorably. But those few who fail to meet that standard must be held accountable, and they were today. One was. No one should be above the law. And today's verdict sends that message. But it's not enough. We can't stop here. In All right, uh, President Biden addressing reform, this verdict, saying he believes it was the right thing and change needs to happen. We are airing that live right now on our Facebook page if you'd like to continue to listen in. We'll be right back. Chevy is America's fastest growing full line brand, and people are taking it everywhere, taking Trailblazer outdoors, confidently taking on new places with Equinox, and taking on more with Silverado. Whatever you do, there's a perfect Chevy to take you anywhere. Find your perfect Chevy and get up to 17% of MSRP cash back on select 2021 Chevy SUV models or get a total value of $51.50 on this 2021 Silverado All-Star Z71. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. Fresher than fresh means being on your A-game every hour of every day. Sure, it's more work for us, but it's more fresh for you. And that's why everything at Smith's comes guaranteed fresh, or we'll make it right. Smith's, fresh for everyone. to your financial health, just a few small steps can make a real difference. Learn, save, and spend with guidance from Chase. Confidence feels good. Chase, make more of what's yours. 
Today was one of those deceiving days. If you look out your window, you think, gosh, it's going to be warm outside. It looks beautiful. It did look nice, but when you stepped outside, it probably didn't feel as warm as A perhaps you thought. A little chilly. Yeah. Yes, we will have some moments of nice, comfortable weather over the next couple of days, but still cool temperatures for tomorrow and then a few more concerns popping up tonight, mostly in the form of wind for this evening. But right now, downtown Salt Lake City, it's about 60 degrees. So if you have a light jacket, it feels great outside currently. Wind gusting to Willa, 16 miles per hour. Wind overall is a lot calmer than it was this time yesterday. Right now, Blanding and Milford seeing some wind gusts about 15 to 20 miles per hour. As we look at satellite and radar here across Utah, we do have mostly clear sky for the northern two-thirds of Utah. Elko down towards Ely, up towards Wells. That's where we're seeing some scattered light rain, and that's valley rain and mountain snowfall. That's in the forecast, becoming a bit more widespread tomorrow. And then across southern Utah currently, Capitol Reef down towards Bryce Canyon, some pockets of light rain. So wind travel impacts here across the state for the bulk of southern Utah, we're going to have a lot of wind tomorrow, mostly south of I-70, and this is going to cause red flag warnings to come into play tomorrow across southern Utah. For northern Utah, we're going to have gusty canyon winds, mostly from about Parley's Canyon up towards Ogden. Uh, we're going to have those wind gusts about 10 to 25 miles per hour tonight. But as we look at future cast, you're going to notice that tomorrow we see more clouds here across Utah, and then by tomorrow afternoon, we're going to start seeing some chances for lighter precipitation starting tomorrow morning at about 6 a.m., and then we'll see this becoming more widespread here across the state by about 7 p.m., but scattered showers, mostly light precipitation, that is light snowfall for the mountains, and our snow levels tomorrow are going to end up rising, but first thing in the morning, we could see some snow down to the valley floors, and then come Thursday, we see clearing. Our temperatures are really going to warm up later this week and into this weekend, but then we'll have more clouds for Saturday and Sunday. But first thing tomorrow morning, mid-20s for Park City, mid-20s for Evanston, about 30 for Logan, and then 30 to 40 for the Wasatch Front, 40s and 50s for Southwest Utah, and 30s and 40s for Eastern Utah. Now, tomorrow afternoon, highs will be in the low 40s for Park City. Same thing for Evanston, Logan, Ogden, Salt Lake, and Provo, all in the 50s, and for St. George, mid-70s. Now, St. George, you're going to have partly cloudy and windy conditions for Wednesday. By Thursday, mid-70s, and then this weekend, here's what I want to point out. We're going to have, yes, warmer temperatures, but we're going to have partly cloudy sky and a lot of wind this weekend. So we'll still want to keep our eye on any concerns regarding camping. I know it's tough to camp in a tent when we've got all that wind. And then less of the warm before the storm, by Monday we cool down and see a few more chances for showers. So highs will be in the 60s starting next week in St. George. For the Wasatch Front, 50s tomorrow again. So another cool day below average. And then 60s Thursday, Friday, and then close to 70 this weekend with lots of clouds and a few showers to start next week. We'll talk more about that coming up for my next full forecast. There's a new push to make medical cannabis more affordable for qualifying patients. Just less stress. You know, less stress was, is healing. We'll show you who's behind the effort to help make the lives of those who use the drug a little easier. And one of the most well-known faces during the COVID-19 pandemic is making a big change. What's next for Dr. Angela Dunn? Trust is built in the day. It's built over time. The early hours and the late nights. It's built by doing the work and pushing the limits every day. Because the promises we make are the promises we were built to keep. During Ram Truck Month, hurry in and get 0% financing for 72 months, plus $2,500 total bonus cash on select 2021 Ram 1500 models in dealer stock. Isn't it great how swinging through Culver's drive through marks the unofficial start to family time? How biting into a hot off the grill butter burger makes worries melt away. And how a fresh frozen custard concrete mixer puts a smile on your face every time. Here, a meal you didn't have to make is a meal made fresh for you. And being greeted with a smile, even beneath a mask, makes all the difference. There's a reason we put so much care into our food. That reason is you. Welcome to delicious. That's a mountain laughing at you. So come prepared in a Kia Sportage and turn that laugh into a whimper.
Right now, lease the 2021 Sportage LX for $159 a month. Monster Energy AMA Supercross in FIM World Championship. Save big on tickets with a $10 savings coupon from Monster Energy. Available at participating Smith's locations. Rice Eccles Stadium, April 24th and May 1st. Still hard to find a spot, just easier to park. Still the big move, just more moving. Still singing, just more in tune. Still the gang's all here, just less are we there yet. The Chevy family of SUVs, making life's journey just better. Current qualified competitive lessees can get this 2021 Traverse for around $299 a month. See your Rocky Mountain Chevy dealers. Arby's, two for six bucks. Every day, go beef, go cheddar, go Arby's, go value. Two of those things for just six bucks. Arby's, we have the meat. The 201 horsepower turbocharged Kia Forte GT. Finally a reason to pull those aviators out of the glove compartment. Right now, lease a 2021 Forte LXS for $139 a month. So in today's Money Watch, you're going to pay more for baby products, adult diapers, feminine care products, toilet paper, razors, and detergent this and fall. Kind of necessities in yeah. life, right? Procter & Gamble is raising prices in September because it's paying more for raw materials as well as transportation. However, Procter & Gamble aims to improve its products and add features to give you more as you pay more. Its competitor, Kimberly Clark, revealed its prices increased last month. P&G sales rose in the quarter ending March 31st with the biggest increases in beauty products, fabric care, things like detergent, also products for the home. So starting April 28th, if you're traveling to Puerto Rico, you need a negative COVID test performed within 72 hours or face a $300 fine. The fine can be avoided if the traveler uploads a negative test result to a government portal within 48 hours after they get to the island. However, travelers should still quarantine until authorities determine those requirements have been met. Those who test positive do have to remain isolated for an amount of time to be determined by the health department. Nike's nearly two decade long relationship with late basketball legend Kobe Bryant is now over. The Bryant estate opted not to renew their deal with Nike earlier this month. Nike signed Bryant in 2003 in what is considered one of the most successful relationships in history. The Nike company issued a statement saying in part, quote, he pushed us and made everyone around him better. Though our contractual relationship has ended, he remains a deeply loved member of the Nike family. Tough day on Wall Street. The Dow down 256 points to close at 33,821. NASDAQ fell 129 points. The S&P lost 28. Still ahead in our next half hour, easing the financial burden for medical marijuana patients. Fox 13's Ben Winslow shows us what's in the works to make that happen. Plus, she is one of the most trusted voices when it comes to Utah's response to the pandemic over the past year. We'll explain the big moves Dr. Angela Dunn is making today. And two major projects are slated to begin in St. George, but before they do, how residents can weigh in. That and more coming up after the break. You know, not everyone sees you when you're on two wheels, so stay alert and always keep your eyes on the path ahead. If you've been hurt by the carelessness of others, choose a law firm that will go the distance to get you the settlement you deserve. Craig Swap and Associates, one call, that's all. That's good advice. The final days are here, and that means Ford Truck Month is coming to a close. It's your last chance to get a great deal on Ford Ranger, Ford Super Duty, and the all-new 2021 Ford F-150. So hurry, because this is one show you don't want to miss. During the final days, lease a 2021 F-150 for just $3.99 a month, plus get complimentary maintenance through Ford Pass Rewards only at your local Ford stores. Home, it's a small word with a big meaning. It's more than a roof over your head. Home protects us, binds us together, and houses a lifetime of memories. For over 80 years, Golden West Credit Union has helped families of all kinds find the place they call home. Start your home improvement project with a home equity line of credit for only 0.99% APR fixed through the end of 2021. Apply now at GWCU.org. We'll take care of you. 
You brought all these players in your Buick? Yeah, it has three rows. So you. Your Buick has Apple CarPlay. Where do I plug in? It's wireless. That's so you. What do I do with these? Careful, it's kind of busy. Oh, I got this with my superpowers. And a little help from your Buick. At the heart of every Buick SUV is you. Current eligible Buick lessees get this low mileage lease on this Encore GX all-wheel drive for around $199 per month. Or current eligible Buick owners get nearly $3,500 purchase allowance. Why trust your personal injury case to just any attorney? You may be leaving thousands of dollars on the table, money you desperately need for compensation and medical bills. Call Craig Swap & Associates right now for the money you deserve. One call, that's all. Our top story tonight, after less than 24 hours of deliberations, the jury has found Derek Chauvin guilty of all charges in the murder of George Floyd. It has been nearly a year since Floyd's death. Today, people are gathering to demonstrate in reaction to the verdict all around the country, including in Salt Lake City. Lauren Steinbrecher joins us live tonight from downtown Salt Lake City. Lauren, what's the scene like now? Yeah, so everyone is kind of starting to show up a little bit. We have uh, Lex Scott, leader of Black Lives Matter Utah, here uh, with a few other people. From our understanding, people are planning to gather at 6 p.m. Uh, Lex posted a video on Facebook earlier with tears of joy saying that uh, we they finally have justice and that is one of the reasons why they're gathering uh, as a way to celebrate that justice for them but also they say that their work continues this is one case is what Lex told me yesterday one trial and they want to make sure that their message is clear that they're going to continue these protests there is still more work to do it doesn't end today with that guilty verdict but that is what things are looking like right now again people showing up around 6 p.m um, here at the public safety building from our, our understanding it's their plan to march in salt lake city and uh, from there we're not quite sure but 6 to 8 p.m and you can tell that that feeling here this afternoon is one of relief for those demonstrators who are showing up live in salt lake city lauren steinbrecker Fox 13 News, Utah. Lauren, thank you so much. The Salt Lake City Commission on Racial Equity and Policing weighed in on the conviction just about an hour ago. Take a listen to this. It is our hope that this verdict will foster change so that the policing across our country will be administered with fairness and with care. That policy and practice will be even-handed. The commission was started last year to make recommendations to city officials regarding policing, budgeting, as well as culture. The sentencing of Derek Chauvin will take place in eight weeks. You can catch all the updates on our sister network, Court TV. It's 13.3 over the air, and they're available to stream on Roku, Fire, Apple, and Android devices. Medical cannabis has been legal in Utah since 2018, but affording it can be a struggle for people already drowning in medical bills. Now, one of the state's leading medical cannabis groups is launching a new initiative to help patients, and they're asking for your help. Fox 13's Ben Winslow has more. In the years since Utah voters legalized medical cannabis, qualifying patients are still reporting problems accessing their medicine. Now the Utah Patients Coalition is trying to find a way to make it at least a little more affordable. Medical cannabis supporters celebrate at 420. It's more than just a day uh, that's synonymous with, with weed smokers. And the growth of Utah's program. If we go back to March 2nd, uh, the day the program opened, there were 17 medical cannabis patients in the state of Utah that could legally access. And now we have almost 26,000 patients. But for some qualifying patients, cannabis is still hard to access. Laura Schroyer has been diagnosed with terminal breast cancer. Do the pain pills suck? I mean, am I allowed to say that? Pain pills suck. They do. So this really helps. But because cannabis is illegal on a federal level, it isn't covered by Medicaid or insurance. With already high medical bills, some are struggling. Most patients spend between $150 to $400 a month on cannabis. A lot of these patients are faced with deciding, are they going to buy food or are they going to buy their medical cannabis? And it wasn't just one or two patients. The Utah Patients Coalition is now raising money to subsidize terminally ill and indigent patients' cannabis needs. As much as we hope that as this program grows, that, that the prices will come down, that's not this year. 
And for a lot of these patients, even when those prices come down, they are still not going to be able to cover it. Dragonfly Wellness is among Utah's cannabis pharmacies participating in the program. They've set aside money to help. The Utah Patients Coalition is now asking people who backed the medical cannabis ballot initiative to donate. We never had a problem with support passing Proposition 2. We are asking for the community to pitch in. If you have a family member, if you, if you know somebody that's been suffering and you could help in a way and understand that, that the pain that people are going through, this is a place where you can donate. Schroyer says it would be one less thing to worry about as she battles cancer. It would help me with financially and maybe just less stress. You know, less stress was, is healing. And we've got a link to that subsidy program on our website. Check it out at fox13now.com. In Salt Lake City, Ben Winslow, Fox 13 News, Utah. Salt Lake County District Attorney Sim Gill says he will no longer seek jail time for simple marijuana possession. The Utah State Legislature made marijuana possession a misdemeanor, putting most of the cases in justice court. Now, if people are caught in Utah's most populous county, prosecutors will opt for what is called a plea in abeyance. If people plead guilty, the conviction is held for a period of time, and if there are no further violations of the law, it is dismissed entirely. We don't think people need to have be convicted with this and be saddled with it, but we also have the state legislature, which uh, still makes it illegal for if you're not, if you're not a medical cannabis consumer. So those are generally reduced to infractions with plea and abeyances. Medical cannabis is typically not prosecuted if people can prove they are card holding patients. Today, Utah Governor Spencer Cox and several state legislatures put the finishing touches on several bills that will level the playing field economically for many in our state. These bills aim to help people with affordable housing, food security, and immigration, all of which have come into sharp focus during the pandemic. And we want to make sure that they don't get lost. We, we want the people of Utah to, uh, to, to learn about these, uh, these incredible uh, pieces of, of legislation, the lawmaking that happened, the good things that are happening in our community. In all, the governor signed half dozen bills during today's ceremonial signings. The city of St. George is growing. No big surprise there, but leaders do want to hear from residents as they prepare planning efforts that will take place over the next 20 years. Two significant planning projects, collectively known as St. George 2040, are nearly ready to begin, but city officials want feedback on potential updates before moving forward. The projects look at recommendations for their downtown area and surrounding neighborhoods, as well as for the city as a whole. We're making updates right now to the general plan and the downtown area plan to accommodate um, the, the added population. and, and and plan to where we can maintain our quality of life, which is which is huge. The survey is available online now. Participants have the chance to win a prize. We have a link at fox13now.com. Well, fire crews are gearing up for a busy wildfire season. Our cameras were rolling as wildland firefighters from Dameron Valley Fire and Rescue held their weekly field exercises. You're seeing them here. Chief Chet Barnes says these and other dangerous scenarios play out every year in real life and can be prevented. Most have been uh, human caused. A lot of um, shooting targets with Tannerite, campfires, illegal burns, anything like that can also contribute to some of the fires that we've had. Firefighters urge people to create a defensible space around their homes, a 30 foot buffer, clear out any brush, dead vegetation, and combustible materials like garbage, recycling containers as well. And when it comes to your car, make sure it's in good operating condition. If it is overheating, don't pull over in brush. In coronavirus news this evening, according to the Davis County Health Department today, a new worker mistakenly mixed the vaccine incorrectly and ended up vaccinating 53 people with just saline or salt water. Not dangerous, but they didn't get the actual vaccine. Clinic leaders are now working to correct the issue. 37 people impacted have already received a corrected vaccine dose. 11 more have rescheduled to get the correct dose. And leaders are offering extra training at this point to make sure this does not happen again. Dr. Angela Dunn has been one of the main faces helping Utah get through the pandemic, but today we've learned she is leaving the State Department of Health. She's not going far. Salt Lake County Mayor Jenny Wilson has asked Dr. Dunn to become the Salt Lake County Health Department's Executive Director after Gary Edwards retires in July. 
And I appreciate that somebody who knows public health as well as Dr. Dunn will be able to come on, come in and support us as we look at, um, you know, this tale of COVID. Um, I hope there is an ending and then it's a short tale, not a long one. Uh, but I think there will be some lessons learned uh, long past COVID that can be applied to future decision making in health. Governor Spencer Cox released a statement about Dr. Don leaving the Utah Department of Health, saying in part, her expertise and facility in translating complex scientific research into plain language has been invaluable during the COVID-19 crisis. And he added, I will miss having her on the state's team, but I'm glad she will continue to serve Utahns living in Salt Lake County. Dr. Dunn will begin work at Salt Lake County on June 1st. She's going to work alongside Gary Edwards to facilitate that transition. No word yet on who will replace her at the Utah Department of Health. Coming up, a new warning from the State Department to international travelers, what they are now advising and how it could impact your upcoming travel plans. It's racing here at Utah Motorsports Park with these kids building their own race cars and then testing them out on the track. We'll talk about all of the experiences and education coming up. And coming up, our wind picks up here across the state this evening. So coming up, I'll let you know where we'll see those strongest wind gusts, where we have a chance for rain and snow tomorrow, plus where we have fire warnings heading into Wednesday. Hey, Rita. With 3% cash back on dining, including takeout from Chase Freedom Unlimited, you're always earning. Then this is officially a takeout week. That's a good choice, Rita. Bon appetit. Earn 3% on dining, including takeout, and so much more. Chase, make more of what's yours. Great philosopher Socrates once said, to find yourself, think for yourself. Great philosopher Arby's once said, y'all ever put spicy sauce on a two for six euro? Arby's, we have the meat. Still hard to find a spot, just easier to park. Still the big move, just more moving. Still singing, just more in tune. Still the gang's all here, just less are we there yet. The Chevy family of SUVs, making life's journey just better. Current qualified competitive lessees can get this 2021 Traverse for around $299 a month. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. This information tonight new international travel restrictions from the State Department could impact you and your family's travel plans. Dozens of level four do not travel advisories were issued today. They impact 80% of the globe. Officials cite COVID-19 and the impacts on its health, social and political climates in those countries as the reason behind this new warning. We spoke in depth with Salt Lake International Airport spokesperson Nancy Vollmer about how this decision could impact Utah travelers. I think overall uh, people need to recognize the fact that um, international travel is going to take longer to rebound. Experts do suggest monitoring COVID-19 transmission levels in countries you may be planning to visit and to also be aware of any restrictions that might be in place, either traveling to or even returning home from other countries. Families in Midway got a chance to participate in a scavenger hunt this afternoon. It also provided ideas on how parents can talk to their children about underage drinking. Parents Empowered, in partnership with Wasatch Behavioral Health and Wasatch Mountain State Park, hosted the event. There were clues along family-friendly trails that helped answer questions in a booklet, while also providing tips on how to discuss underage drinking. Anything that I can be helpful in helping create stronger family ties and stronger family communication and helping our children grow up to be healthy adults that are having good, healthy relationships, I want to be a part of. So Col uh, Colleen Osher, who uh, was there, was the former prevention coordinator for Wasatch Behavioral Health. She was involved in starting the project a year and a half ago. She retired two months ago, but she came back to see it completed. It's an incredible opportunity for elementary school, middle school, and high school students to build and race these electric cars. How it all came together and who came out on top, coming up. We're also like hoping for a fresh start. We'll hear from the team as they get ready to start their season this Saturday. And the Jazz left L.A. with a win over the Lakers. It's a nice win, but the players will tell us what they expect the next time they take on the defending NBA champions.
The 2021 Jetta ranks number one for lowest maintenance cost among compact sedans. Now's the time to sign and drive. Hurry in during the Volkswagen Sign and Drive event and lease a new 2021 Jetta for zero down, zero deposits, zero first month's payment, and zero due at signing. Keeping food fresher than fresh means being on your A-game every hour of every day. Sure, it's more work for us, but it's more fresh for you. And that's why everything at Smith's comes guaranteed fresh, or we'll make it right. Smith's, fresh for everyone. Life's full of little accidents. And the Hyundai Tucson helps make sure they stay little by alerting you if you drift out of your lane and even gently correcting your steering. Because unlike your favorite shirt, you are irreplaceable. Hyundai, the longer you look, the more there is to like. Get 0% APR for 60 months on the Tucson or Kona or get up to 3,500 in total savings only at your Utah Hyundai dealer. Yeah, dude, that doesn't look good. I know what to do. I'm going to castnetusa.com. I can apply minutes, and if approved, I can have the money as soon as the same business day. Go to castnetusa.com to apply for the money you need. Welcome to the NFL Draft. Trevor Lawrence, everything you look for in a franchise quarterback. The arm strength, the athleticism, phenomenal skills. His highlight reel is incredible. One of the greatest receivers ever to play in college. With the first pick. The Volkswagen Tiguan has a lower maintenance cost than Subaru, Honda, and Toyota compact SUVs. Now's the time to sign and drive. Lease a new Tiguan for zero down, zero deposit, zero first month payment, and zero due at signing, or get 0% APR financing for 72 months. The Utah Motor Sports Park in Grantsville was alive with the sound of electric race cars today as over 100 students from across Utah competed in the Mountain West Grand Prix. Oh, Fox 13 Spencer Joseph has the story of the elementary, middle, and high school students who are learning by racing. <laughs> It's a battle of wit and machinery. I'm trying to go fast and not hitting anybody. The Mountain West Grand Prix, put on by the USU Stars Gear Up program, is a unique race. It's kind of nerve wracking, not gonna lie, because there's all of these kids and all of these cars. All of them built and raced by elementary, middle, and high school students to teach kids about engineering, math, and science. You get a sense of accomplishment when you can see it out there. This is Delta High School, and they're competing against more than a dozen other team. And then there's the Formula 24 cars themselves. Many people are familiar with the most famous words in motorsports. Drivers start your engines. Well, for these cars behind me, they're actually running. And they're silent. That's because they're all electric. We're running on a tiny 9-volt battery. So as soon as that battery is dead, we're done. But you have to think about it and think, well, am I going too fast? Am I going too slow? But to get here also takes teamwork. Cottonwood High School knows that well. Our team consists of like 97% immigrants and refugees coming from under, underdeveloped countries. We use our different ideas and like connect them together so we can actually get somewhere in the competitions. All watched on from their teacher, Mr. Perez. I would like to be there helping them, but looking at them fixing the problem and understanding that and growing because of that, it is priceless. After practice, it was time to get out on track. We're going to win. You know the racing lines. You know what you're supposed to do. All right, we're going to win this. Never let the body go. <laughs> and dream flat. Right away, the Cottonwood team developed a problem. But with some cool heads, they were back racing in no time. After 90 minutes, the race was over. But the lessons still remain as the Delta team walked away placing. And Cottonwood High School, even though they didn't win, finishing was just as much of an accomplishment. Uh, it, it doesn't matter if we win or not. It's much of the more experience and having the fun. For any teacher like myself, it's a dream came true. Spencer Joseph, Fox 13 News, Utah. What a fun day of school. The team from Gunnison Valley Middle School, known as No Limit. Congratulations. You guys took home the grand prize. 
That is so neat to see. All right, though, Allison, it was a nice day out there for those kids. I'll bet it would have been awful yesterday in the wind, so. Oh my goodness. That's just great today. And a nice little window of time today where we had the calm wind. We still have a couple of areas where we have a light breeze, about 10 to 20 miles per hour. Milford, and then down into Blanding, but tonight our wind is going to ramp up again. So here are your top weather headlines on this Tuesday. So we'll have gusty canyon winds overnight and into tomorrow morning. Tomorrow, a weak storm moves through We'll have light rain and light snow with that front and then warm and cloudy conditions for this upcoming weekend. But because of the wind and the warm temperatures of southern Utah, we do have fire weather warnings in place for tomorrow. That's everywhere highlighted in hot pink right here. So red flag warnings going until tomorrow night throughout the day. So something to keep in mind, especially if you are in far southern Utah, but just a good idea to be careful here across the entire state. But satellite and radar here across northern Utah right now, most Mostly clear sky. We do have more clouds for southwestern Utah. Light rain and snow from Bryce up towards Torrey Capital Reef area. Temperatures here across Utah. We have 40s and 50s for northern Utah. 40s and 50s for eastern Utah. And for St. George, temperatures currently in the mid-70s. Now we look at wind travel impacts here across the Wasatch Front for this evening and into early tomorrow morning, mostly near the canyon. So we're going to have the wind Parley's Canyon up towards the U. For the areas of yellow, that's about 25 to 35 miles per hour. The areas of red that you're seeing all the way off up into the Ogden area kind of on and off. That'll be during the morning commute tomorrow. The areas of red about 35 to 45 miles per hour, but gusty canyon winds this evening and future cast showing you that overnight we're going to have the chance for some rain to develop as well. This will be when that wind is ramping up tomorrow morning about 7 a.m. So grab the umbrella for tomorrow morning. Maybe just put it out by the door so you remember. Put it in the car right now while you're thinking about it. But we look at the second half of the day tomorrow. Scattered showers even for central and southern Utah and very windy across southern Utah tomorrow afternoon. And the next couple of days, clouds. That's the main story for this weekend for northern Utah, southern Utah. You're going to have a lot of wind this upcoming weekend. Then early next week, Monday into Tuesday, we're going to have widespread rain and snow across the region Monday into Tuesday, along with some colder temperatures. So overnight temps will be about 25 to 40 degrees here across the state with the majority of us for the Wasatch Front on the higher end. And for St. George, close to 60 tomorrow morning. Tomorrow afternoon, our temperatures Park City 42, Wasatch Front around 50, St. George mid 70s. So tomorrow for St. George, you're going to have the wind. For Thursday, mid-70s, less wind. 80s for this weekend, but it's windy, so not as enjoyable. Then a big cool down into Monday. Sunday into Monday, about a 15 to 20 degree cool down. So highs will be around 60 on Monday for St. George. Definitely have some Monday blues there. And for the Wasatch Front, we're going to have those temperatures close to 65 to 70 starting Thursday and into Sunday and by Monday low 50s and then we'll have some more of those chances for rain into early Tuesday overnight temps 30s 40s and even 50s here along the Wasatch Front over the next week. Well, it's been a long off season for Real Salt Lake. They're coming off a tough year where they missed the playoffs, and they're still up for sale after former owner Deloy Hansen was forced out. But they're excited to start fresh with the season opener this Saturday at Minnesota. I can't wait. I think I think everyone's buzzing. Um, kind of a kind of a bummer having a bye week, the, the opening season of MLS. Um, but I'm buzzing. The team's buzzing, and we can't wait to get it started. I think I'm, I'm more motivated by the by the bad taste that last year left in our mouth, and just that feeling of disappointment from the end of last season. That motivates me more than anything for performing well this season and, and prove to the fans and the city uh, that we're we're better than how we perform. I wouldn't put so much on the um, emphasis on on the results. Of course, the results is something that, that you want it to be three points every single time. That's a given. But I think our main focus has, has been the, the quality of training, the commitment to training, the hard work that we give every day, and a positive environment. And we believe with that on a day-to-day -day basis, in the long term, will be beneficial for us as a, as a collective. 
After losing to the Lakers on Saturday, the Jazz bounced Donald back with the, the win over the Lakers last night to keep a game and a half lead over the Phoenix Suns for the best record in the NBA at 45 and 13. While the Lakers were still missing their stars, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, Jazz were a lot closer to full strength with Rudy Gobert, Mike Conley, Derek Favors back in the lineup. Now Donovan Mitchell remains out with an injured ankle. So both teams know they'll look a lot different if they meet in the playoffs. But for now, the Jazz will take the win. You know, no matter who we play, uh, you know, we, we, we take the challenge and, uh, you know, we, we try to get better every night and, and obviously win the game. We know that when we're going to meet them, if we meet them in the playoffs, uh, it's probably going to be a different team for sure. I mean, we still have a lot of work to do. I think we can um, compete with any team in this league. I mean, obviously, this is a team we're probably going to see down the road. So, you know, just come in and, and do the small things, do the little things, and, you know, just continue to try to get a win. Next up, the Jazz play at the Houston Rockets on Wednesday. And the Utes adding another Utah State transfer. Marco Anthony is joining another former Aggie, Raleigh Worcester, to the U Utah roster to rejoin with new Utah head coach Craig Smith. He started all 28 games for the Aggies last season, averaging 10 points per game, five rebounds, and three assists. Anthony won a national championship with Virginia before transferring to Utah State. A lot of new faces on the basketball rosters next season. We'll be right back. The quiz show that takes players for a loop returns, and now... Which is the real flag of France? Lock it in. Lock it in. Fail. Oh, no! They'll go head-to-head. -head. We're all coming for you. And winners... $100,000! Come back for more. What did I sign up for? Ah! Rob Lowe hosts Mental Samurai, premieres Tuesday, May 25th on Fox. It was his goodbye message just in case. Judge Marilyn Millian on the shocking health scare that shook her family. Tomorrow at 2 on Fox 13. Get the max out of your tax refund at iMart Express. With two pairs starting under 40 bucks, you'll spend less on the have-tos and keep more for the want-tos. Our prices won't break the bank. Your tax refund goes further at iMart Express. Forged from 50 years of service, we're resilient and ready to press forward. We're stronger today than ever before. We believe good service is synonymous with safety. That's why we're using industry-leading protocols to keep our buses and trains clean and safe and monitoring rides to optimize social distancing. We're stronger together because that's how we got here. Let's keep moving forward. Hear that? That's a mountain laughing at you. So come prepared in the Kia Sportage. With available all-wheel drive, 237 horsepower, and 260 pound-feet of torque. And not in the less torque and horsepower equipped Honda CRV Touring. So you can turn that mountain's laugh into a whimper. Get 0% APR for 75 months with a 2021 Sportage or lease an LX for $159 a month. Monster Energy AMA Supercross in FIM World Championship. 22 riders in the starting gate believe I will be champion. The final two races, April 24th and May 1st at Rice Echo Stadium. Visit supercrosslive.com. Oh, what a beauty. What a change from yesterday, right? Blue skies out there. Sunshine today. We still do have a little bit of wind lingering as we take a live look outside from our Ochre Mountain camera. But it is always nice when you can see downtown Salt Lake City from up there. Yeah, right. We do want to let everybody know we're, we're uh, going to be following everything that's happening tonight. We don't anticipate more than just uh, demonstrations over the uh, Derek Chauvin case after uh, he was found guilty of killing George Floyd. But we'll be watching nationally and locally for response. Yeah, we hope everyone has a nice evening. And we'll be back here tonight at 9 p.m. As Max mentioned, we do have reporters stationed throughout downtown Salt Lake City. We'll bring you the very latest. If anything breaks before then, of course, follow us on Facebook and our website, fox13now.com.